consider uh, several aspects of economics. Many times people ask that whether it is economically viable. My answer to that is when you have something like 500 kg waste or more than that like 1 ton, 2 ton, metric ton, 3 metric ton, it becomes a very viable option. You just imagine in any, any part of country today uh, in India to carry the waste, to transport the waste, it easily takes anywhere between 1 rupee per kg to 3 rupees per kg. Because most of these urban local bodies, they have the dumping yard, which are at a very large uh, distance away from the city because they want to keep the dumping yard away. And there are places where I have seen this waste being carried for even up to 50 kilometers. Now, if it is per kilometer 3 rupees cost or one, even 1 rupee cost, 50 rupees per kg is a huge cost for transportation. And that transportation cost itself makes the project very attractive as far as the economic viability is concerned. Plus, just imagine that the number of vehicles which are running through the roads of Mumbai early morning or throughout the day and then polluting the environment. And this transportation of the waste in the city is a major reason why it should be done in a decentralized manner. I will like to put a or coin a term environ economically friendly. It's, it should be economical, but I am not really worried about the money part of it. But if you are looking for the production of gas, production of manure, anywhere ab after 250 kg or 500 kg, it's a very good proposition for having a Nisargarund project. The investment cost will come to something like for a half a ton project, let us say. In Indian rupees, it comes to 12 lakh rupees. And this 12 lakh rupees investment, uh, which is there for uh, 40 years because the life of the plant is around 40 years and there will be a regular uh, expenditure there will be two employees required for that but after that the quantity of gas which you are going to get out of this project will make it uh, break even after three years and after three years it becomes a win-win situation because you are not carrying the waste to the dumping yard so you are uh, there is one more factor which we have to consider in this that dumping yard space, see in, in any urban area, space is very important. To get one square foot, it becomes very, very difficult. Now, urban areas uh, like Mumbai, there are the total dumping yard area could be in terms of several hundred hectares. So we must get that dumping space also recovered or at least stop any more dumping space to be created. And from that angle also it becomes very, very economically viable because say one ton Nisargaron plant will require about four, uh, 40 to 50 square meter of area which is around 500 square foot. But in that 500 square foot area, the life is 40 years. Every year you are processing 300 metric tons of waste. So in 40 years it will be 12,000 metric tons of waste processed in that 500 square feet. Now this is what is a very economical proposition for space. It's a totally indigenous project. We don't have to depend on other countries for getting any other, uh, any important parts of this. You create employment for running the plant and uh, for uh, poverty elevation, it is one of the best projects because this project can be handled by almost unskilled employees. You will be surprised out of 200 uh, plants which we are running in uh, various parts of the country, all these plants are being run by the rack pickers. And I can tell you with a lot of confidence, these rack pickers are now almost like scientists because they can tell me what is going wrong in the system and what should be improved. In fact, many of the suggestions of the rack pickers who are running the plant have helped me in improving the design. I, I really appreciate their keen observation. In the larger project, larger Nisargarun project, there are restrictions of course on the material which we input, although it is said that for it is meant for all biological waste. There are certain biological waste which will create problem and major out of them are the rice straw, wheat straw, the uh, some of these coconut leaves, large leaves, coconut stems, because uh, large bones, because what, what basically they will do, they will spoil the mixer. It's like coconut shell, hardness of the shell is so, uh, so much that if I put that in the mixer, the blades will get spoiled. So we don't allow that. But we allow all the vegetable refuse uh, coming out of the kitchens again, all the stale food, all the rotten food, or all the waste food, which is coming out of the kitchen. Uh, we can use it for animal waste. 
in fact some of my plants are running on abattoir waste so basically they are uh, uh, large slaughterhouses where a good amount of animal waste comes out and all this can be processed in the cell zone plant it's not a issue the cow dung or these uh, animal excreta can be processed in this as in kitchens and in vegetable markets because vegetable market you will find a large number amount of fruit waste is generated even some of these grains which are spoiled because of the uh, weather condition they can be processed in this about nisargaron project brc has put one uh, document on the website of brc and this document is available in the form of uh, technology for that there is a some price 25500 rupees is the price so a person can purchase this uh, technology and after buying the technology he can build as many biogas plants as he wants he doesn't have to pay any royalty to brc so it's in a very small quantity small amount of money these techniques are made available to the common people and they can they, now there are more than 150 uh entrepreneurs who have purchased this nisargaron technology and they are they are distributed in all over the country so suppose a municipality in uh, jammu kashmir or a municipality in uh, jharkhand wants to have a nisargaron plant they can go through the website find out who is the vendor in that area and they can ask the vendor to supply the uh, plant to them by through their ro- proper procedure so we have we have tried our best so that the technology is made available as easily as possible to summarize i can say that uh, the waste management is a extremely simple process or extremely difficult based on your thinking if you are able to understand the concept of waste and if you can convince the yourself first and the neighborhood that the keeping the waste in a segregated manner is an important step which is to be done by individuals so let the individuals keep the waste separately and let the urban local bodies then collect it in a separate manner just uh, 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 i always talk to the urban local bodies the if they are sending the vehicle every day for collecting all the waste instead of that they send only for glass waste on monday for plastic waste on tuesday and green waste is collected every day i think they can reduce their transportation cost of course we will need a good support from people and that's where i said on individual as well as the urban local body level we need to spread this concept so urban local bodies have to be innovative like in uh, koyamtur i found that a innovative collector he has he is running a community kitchen on the biogas plant and this community kitchen people are coming right from morning to late evening and they are cooking their food and putting some few rupees there and going back it gives a very very nice message that municipality cares for you we try to take care of your waste at the same time whatever the earth is giving back to us in the form of gas and manure we are trying to use it for a community let people develop vegetable gardens let organic carbon content of this country go up so that the productivity remains good and the whole system remains sustainable